You're all slacking. I know Joe will tell me if I missed it. The sippy. Let's see what will happen there. If I call this V1, I'm just cutting the circuit. I'm just showing this current going through them, and this is V2. If you look at V1, first, if the other inductor is not in the picture, it's gone. If that one is missing, let's say it's gone here. It's not here. You only have this one. It's L1, DI1, DT, right? But what's going to happen? The mutual inductance here is going to be M, DI2, DT. And now, is that going to be positive or negative in this picture? Let's try again. Oh my. The current entering is going to make it plus, minus. The mutual inductance, the current entering, plus, minus. The dot will be the same. So are they positive or negative? Positive. positive. And V2 will be... will be what? Will be L2 DI2 DT M DI1 DT and that's also going to be a positive. I'm trying to replace this whole circuit with a T equivalent circuit. So I'm trying to replace it with, I, want, I, want, I don't like mutual inductance, I don't want to deal with them. So if I want to take this, replace it with inductors, a T1. That's what we call T because it looks like the letter T there. Like this one. Let's look at V1. And if I define I sub 1 as the current going through it, the same way we have that one, I sub 1 is this current, and I sub 2 is that current. I'm trying to decide what should I put for numbers here and here to give me that equation. Notice if I made that M and I made that L1 minus M and this is L2 minus M. Let's see what will happen if I did that. If I do a KVL right here It says what? I'll do it in red here. V1 equals what? The voltage drop here, which is L1 minus M times what? DI1 DT. Let's travel this way. Plus the mutual inductance times DDT. What's the current through that coming down? What is the current down through this one? I1 plus I2. I1 plus I sub 2. That's I sub 1 here. Let's clean that. See if that will give me that equation. Would be L1 DI1 DT minus M DI1 DT plus M di1 dt ready guys plus m di2 dt does anything cancel and you end up with what v1 equals l1 di1 dt plus m di2 dt isn't that the same as this one And I bet you if we derive V2 for the circuit, it will be the same as this one. So this is the equivalent of that.
Now, the only thing I will warn you, what happens if these dots are not exactly in the same direction? They're not both positive or both negative. If one is positive and one is negative, So, if either of the dots, hey guys, ready? If either of the dots on the windings of the given transformer is placed on the opposite end. If both, then you're okay. But if just one of them of its coil, then we have a problem. What's going to happen? Then what you need to do, you need to replace M with negative M. Which means what? L1 minus M1 becomes what? This becomes L1 plus M. And you know L2 minus M becomes what? L2 plus M. So if either of the dot, only one of them, is not in the same direction, the current entering like one positive, but the other one, the current leaving instead of entering, then we have a problem. We have to change that. Let's see if I can find an example here for both of these. Let's say I have 30 millihenry here. This is I sub 1. The dot on the top, the, on both of them, and this is 60 millihenry. 60, not 6. The mutual inductance is 40 millihenry. And let's say I have I sub 2 entering. So notice the current, both currents entering the dot. The equivalent of that will be this circuit. The middle one is the mutual inductance. What was my mutual inductance? 40 millihenry. The top one is going to be what? L1 minus, oh, L1 minus the mutual. What's L1? 30. 30 minus 40, which is what? Negative 10 millihenry. And the other one is going to be L2 minus M. What's L2? 60. 60 minus 40. 20 millihenry. So if I sub 2 going in, I sub 1 going in this one. So if you don't like to deal with mutual inductance, you can take that out, replace it with this circuit, and neglect mutual inductance completely. Don't even pay attention to it. Even if we still possibly take into account new mutual inductances? Well, if you don't want to deal with it, if you want to deal with mutual inductance, that's fine. You can leave it. Right. But if that's a problem for you, you can take this one out, replace it with that. And now there's no mutual inductance, just normal circuit. Okay. Now what happens if one of them is actually um, going backward? So let's define the current here. Same problem, 30 millihenry. 
and we have I sub 1 going this way. Sixty millihenry, and I got I sub two going this way, but the dot here and the dot here. So notice I sub one is entering the dot. There is no change in that, but I sub two is not entering; it's leaving. It's backward. So now we reverse the polarity of one of the dots. If both currents entering the dots or both leaving the dots, that's the equivalent. But if one is backward, one enters, one leaves then the middle piece is going to be the negative mutual inductance is 40. so this will be negative 40 millihenry this is i sub 1 i sub 2 this one is going to be L1 plus the mutual inductance. L1 is 30, 30 plus 40, which is what? 70 millihenry. And this one is going to be L2 plus the mutual inductance, 60 plus 40, 100 millihenry. So this is the T equivalent. The pi equivalent, we're almost done. The pi equivalent is a little bit uh, more challenging. The math is ugly too in it. So what's the pi equivalent? Again, if I have L1, this is the dot, this is I sub 1, L2, this is the dot, this is I sub 2, we can try to derive the math behind it, I'll bypass that. The equivalent of that in pi, it's going to look like this. That's why it's called the pi. Ready for them? The top, it's going to be L1, L2 minus M squared over M. The right one, L1, L2 minus M squared over L1 minus M. And the left, that's the L1 here used to be, L1, L2 minus M squared over L2 minus M. The good news about them, the top is always the same. Now, an example here, let me take one. Give me some numbers. Do I have any numbers? Here we go. I'll just do this, I don't know. I don't have an example really, so I'll make one up. Let's say that's two Henry. Six Henry. I sub one. I sub two. Both entering the dots. 
then we'll talk about if one is changed. And let's say this is, I don't know, 5 Henry. I'm just making things up. So what's the equivalence going to be? The equivalent of that is going to be this times that minus m squared. 2 times 6 is what? 12. 12 minus 25. 12 minus 25, which is negative 13. So the top is going to be negative 13 for all of them. Divided by m, which is what? 5. Of course, it can't be 5. Why? Because what's the biggest value? I just made things up. What's the biggest value this one can have? It's the square root of 2 times 6, which is 12. So about three. So two times six is what? 12. 12 minus nine, which is four. The top is four. So the first one would be four over three, which is four over three, Henry. The next one is gonna be four over two, minus 3. It's negative 1, negative 4, Henry. And this one will be what? 4 over 6 minus 3, which is 4 over 3, Henry. That's the equivalent of this circuit, if you want to go with pi. Isn't it supposed to be 3, the numerator of those? Is it 3? 2 times 6, 12, 12 minus 9, it is 3. Which is 1 Henry. This is negative 3 Henry. Which is 1 Henry, right? So 1, 1, negative 3. Now, if either dot is reversed, if either dot is reversed, one dot, what will happen? You're going to replace M with negative M. Well, if you replace M with negative M, what happens when you square it? Does it really change anything when you square it? No. So this will be L1, L2 minus M squared over, replace M with negative M. The top doesn't change. L1, L2 minus M squared. Replace M with negative M. This becomes L1 plus M. And this will be L1, L2 squared minus M squared over L2 plus M. Because you're placing M with negative M. L2 minus a negative M, that becomes a plus M. So if you flip one of these dots, this will be a negative. That will be a plus. This will be smaller because you're adding. This will be like 3 over. Instead of minus, it will be a plus here. So I reverse one of the directions on these. L2 is 6, Henry. L1 is 2 Henry, mutual inductance, 3 Henry, this is I sub 2. If you switch both, everything stays the same as the top one. So this will be, if you switch one of them, 
We said the top is going to be 3. That doesn't change. 3 over negative 3, which is what? Negative 1, Henry. This one will be 3 over 6 plus 3, which is 9. 1 third, Henry. Next one will be 3 over L1, which is 2 plus 3. What's 2 plus 3? 5, 2 fifth, or 3 fifth, Henry. That's the equivalent of that circle. So you can take your circuit, replace it with the pi circuit, and you are ready to go. Again, if this doesn't bother you, usually couple with the dot convention is fine with you, it's not fine. And again, we said the energy stored, it's one half L1 I1 squared plus one half L2 I2 squared plus the mutual inductance I sub 1 times I sub 2. That's the total energy stored in the system.